Welcome pre-cal students to class today. Matthew and Caleb, hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys are ready to learn some math today. Hope you've had a nice three weeks off. I know I've enjoyed it, and I hope you guys have also. Um, unfortunately, all good things must come to an end, and it's time to get started with our math. Um, grab your books, grab your notebooks, calculators, pens, pencils, everything you need, and let's get started. Uh, first of all, your test will be in two weeks. Now remember, when you walk in the door, just like last semester, um, you must have your integrity sheet totally filled out. Um, and once uh, you walk in the door, you cannot work anymore on those. So make sure you're totally caught up on your homework. Number two, uh, make this very simple. Don't forget from now on, when you come to, to, uh, when you come to my house for a test on a Monday, the test is due. Wednesday. Now that doesn't mean you come to my house and ask questions by Wednesday, although you're welcome to come to my house and ask questions, that's fine. It means you turn the test in to me Wednesday, totally done, all questions asked, etc., etc. Okay, same thing for your quiz coming up this weekend. Okay, uh, this weekend you'll have a quiz on Saturday. Um, and that is due on Wednesday. That means all questions are asked, every problem's done, it's in my hands, or you will lose points. Now, I don't mind coming to your houses and picking those up if I have to, just let me know. Congratulations on a good first semester. You guys did really well, and I mean that, and I'm proud of how you guys did, okay? Uh, let me grab a quick drink here and let's get started. Okay, we're going to start off looking at chapter 10. That's the first chapter we'll tackle this semester. Go ahead and write down sequences and series, and the lesson number is 10.1. Now, the date today is the 14th, if you'd like to keep track of that, January 14th. And again, the heading is sequences and series, lessons 10, lesson 10.1. And remember, it's been about three weeks. Let me remind you, I do go fast on purpose, and just pause the video when you need to to write things down. Here we go. Let's first of all write down the definition of a sequence. You need to know what a sequence is. A sequence is, and by the way, let me pause and tell you, today's math is going to be really, really, really easy. However, it's very important math. I'm laying a foundation, and I'm getting you accustomed to terms and symbolism that you really, really need to understand. So please work hard and pay attention. Sequence is a set of numbers that have a pattern. Let me give you some examples. Please write this definition down and then write down these examples. Let's say I added two over and over and over. That would be a sequence, dot, 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 dot. Let's say that um, I had a number like negative five and I added one, um, so negative four. Then I added two, that would be negative two. Then I added three. Then I added four, then I added five, etc. That would be a sequence. It's a set of numbers that has a pattern. And by the way, you can also put dots here, and that means the sequence continues going to the left and continues going to the right. I could have a sequence in once I had two um, times two times two times two times two, etc., etc. Okay, do you see how easy this is? A sequence is just a set of numbers, a set of given numbers that have a pattern. Okay, it's that easy. Now, write this down, please. A series is the sum of a sequence. Please write that in your notes. A series is the sum of a sequence. Now, look at these numbers right here. If I just simply got rid of these commas and put plus signs in between these numbers, now I no longer had a now I no longer have a sequence, I have a series. Do you see how easy that is? So when you take a sequence and you put plus signs between the numbers, thus you're finding the sum of these numbers, we call that a series. And that's the only difference. Isn't that simple? So a sequence is a set of numbers that have a pattern, and a series is the sum of a sequence. So you're given a sequence, and you add them up, and that's called a series. Okay? Pretty, pretty simple. All right, let's continue on. Let's talk now about what an nth term is 
or what a general term is. Now, I usually use this expression. I believe the book uses this expression. It uses both of them, but it mainly uses this one. So these two terms are interchangeable. An nth term is the exact same thing as a general term. So let's talk for a second about what an nth term is or what a general term is. And by the way, the video is not going to be very long today. Um, I'm trying to lay a foundation like we usually do on the first lesson of a chapter. Copy down these numbers, please. Consider these numbers 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. Now, this is a sequence, okay? And um, I think you can see we're multiplying by 2. Each number has been multiplied by 2, so that's the pattern. Now, Take a look at this equation. Go ahead and write this equation in your notes and take a look at it. Let's study this equation for a second and let's see why we call this equation the nth term or the general term for this sequence above right here. All right, let me show you why. Everybody ready? Pay attention and watch carefully. Okay, this two right here is called term number one because it came first. This is called term number two your 8 is your third term, 16 is your fourth term, and 32 is your fifth term. Now that's pretty obvious, okay? Let me grab a quick drink here. Now, watch what happens here. Watch this carefully. A subscript on what, excuse me, A subscript N equals 2 to the N power. Now, if I put a 1 in for this N right here, I would get out 2. If I put a 2 in for n right here, 2 times 2 is 4. If I put a 3 in for n right here, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. If I put a 4 in right here, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. And if I put a 5 in for n, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 32. So do you see what this general term or this nth term does for you? It allows you to put a number in, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or etc., and it gives you out the term. For example, if I didn't feel like multiplying by 2 over and over and over, and I wanted to find something like the 23rd term, let's say I wanted to find what the 23rd term was way out here I could simply put 23 n for n right here so I would have 2 to the 23rd power now I'm not going to take the time and type into my calculator 2 to the 23rd power and we all know I'd get a really huge number but I would know what the 23rd term is now here's how we write this we say a subscript 1, first term is 2, second term is 4, third term is 8, fourth term is 16, fifth term is 32, and then we say a subscript 23, the 23rd term is whatever this number here would be. So do you, do you not see what this is? An nth term or a general term is an equation that allows you to get out any term in the sequence. And do you see how we call the first number the first term, the second number the second term, etc.? This is not too hard. Do you see this okay? So, with all of this in mind, please watch carefully. I would like you to go ahead and find the 17th term. A subscript 17. So let's go ahead and find the 17th term. Okay? So, I would have a subscript n right here, so I'm going to put a 17, equals 2 to the n power, 2 to the n power, oh sorry, I shouldn't put it n, I should go ahead and put 17, 2 to the 17th power. So A subscript 17, or in other words, the 17th term is 131,072. 131,072. Now isn't that a lot faster than trying to write all those numbers out? It really is, okay? So an nth term, or the general term, whatever you want to call it, is an equation 
um, that describes a given sequence. And you can take that nth or general ter term and you can find any term in the sequence. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So let's review for a quick second here. We've talked about what a sequence is, we've talked about what a series is, and we've talked about what an nth term is. Okay, please understand this. Now I told you today's video is really short. When I drew these lesson plans up two or three weeks ago, I said to myself, I'm going to go really slow and make sure these students understand this. Now, the nth term for a sequence is this. Let's, let's practice this again. I want you to find a couple things. Now, first of all, I want you to find the first five terms. Now, I chose this problem for a reason. Notice your nth term is n squared minus 1. Okay, do you see that? But then notice over here it says n has to be greater than or equal to 3. Now let's go back a page. Usually we call the first term 1, and the second term 2, and the third term 3. That's normal, but every now and then they will give you um, some parameters in which you're going to have to start with a different number. So in this case, notice it says your n has to be greater than or equal to 3. Now equal to 3 means I can use 3. So the first number I'm going to put in is 3. Okay. And now watch this. This is so important that you see the students. Please watch this. Normally you would put a 1 in to find the what term? To find the first term. Correct? But in this case, because the first number that we have to start with is 3, then that means a 3 represents my first term, putting a 3 in for n. I would put a 4 in for my second term. I would put a 5 in to find my third term, and etc. So first of all, I want us to find the first five terms, okay? So I'm going to put a 3 in right here. 3 times 3 is 9 minus 1 is 8. So my first term is 8. Now I'm going to find the next term, so I'm going to put a 4 in. Okay, I put a 4 in. 4 times 4 is 16, minus 1 is 15. Next, I'm going to put a 5 in. 5 times 5 is 25, minus 1 is 24. Okay, all right, next I'm going to put a 6 in. 6 times 6 is 36, minus 1 is 35. And then lastly, I'll put a 7 in. 7 times 7 is 49 minus 1 is 48. So there, I found the first five terms. Now don't be confused. Normally you would put what in for n? A 1. And then you would put a 2 in. And then a 3. And then a 4. And then a 5. And that's how you would find the first five terms. But every now and then they're, they're going to throw a little curveball at you and they're going to give you some constraints or guidelines for what n can be. And so don't, no big deal, don't freak out. Just understand if n is greater than or equal to 3, then that means the first number you can put in has to be 3. So we put a 3 in to get the first term. We put a 4 in to get the second term. We put a 5 in to get the third term. Okay, and then so on and so forth. So there's the first five terms. Now, be very, very, very careful. If I asked you to find the first term, what did you put in? A three. If I asked you to find the second term, what did you put in? A four. If I asked you to find the third term, what did you put in? A five. Notice how these numbers here are always two higher than these over here. For the first term, we put it in a three. For the second term, a four. So if I want you to find the eighth term using this pattern up here, then I better put a what in? I better put a 10 in. If I put a 10 in, that will help me get out my eighth term. So next, I want us to find the eighth term for the sequence. So I'm going to put a 10 in for n. 10 times 10 is 100 minus 1 is 99. So there we go. I just found the eighth term. Now let's find the eighteenth term. Now normally to find the eighteenth term you would put what in for n normally? You would put in eighteen. 
So I would put an 18 right here for the n normally. But this is not a normal problem. We have some constraints over here. Well, remember, the number we've put in so far to find a certain term, this number's always been too higher. So if I'm looking for the 18th term, then I better put in 20. And 20 will give me out the 18th term. All right? So if I put a 20 in right here, 20 times 20 is 400, 400 minus 1 is 399. So there, very easily, you just found the 18th term. Isn't that a lot faster than trying to work all these out and, and going on and on? You can simply take an nth term or a general term, put in a certain term number, and get out the exact term. All right, let me get a quick drink here, and let's continue on. Last thing, I want you to be able to understand what certain notations mean. So, S, not A, S subscript 5 would mean to find the sum of the first five terms of a given sequence. So if I tell you, here's a sequence, find S subscript 5, that just simply means you add the first five terms together. It's not difficult. So, using this sequence right here, go ahead and write this down, I want you to find S subscript 4 and S subscript 6. So, let's find the sum of the first four terms. If you take negative, let me go ahead and write this down, S subscript 4 equals negative 2 plus a positive 4 plus a negative 6 plus a positive 8. If you add all of those together, you will get 4. Now let's find the sum of the first six terms. So we have negative 2 plus and then a 4 and then plus my negative 6 plus 8 plus negative 10 and then plus 12. If you add all of those together, you will get 6. So what am I trying to teach you here? I want you familiar with what this notation right here means. I want you to know what this means, okay? When you have an S and a little number to the right, it simply means find the sum of the first however many terms they're asking you to find, okay? All right, let's continue on. Your homework is this right here. Now, um, I'd like to get started on it right away, but if you can't, that's your, that's your decision. Um, there's a video, of course, for you to watch. I encourage you to do the homework totally on your own, and then check your answers in the back of the book, and then any of the ones you miss, you can use the video to help you. But if that's up to you, if you watch the video while you're doing your homework, that's your decision. Um, for the evens, you can check those by watching the evens on the video, okay? So here's your homework assignment. Please do it right away. Please call me or email me if you have any questions. Hope you guys have a good day, and please stay on top of your homework.